Well, Bloody Sunday and the Selma to Montgomery marches are widely known civil rights events that changed the nation and impacted the world. But what if I told you those events didn't actually start in Selma? Reporter George McDonald explains from the West Alabama Newsroom. The significance of the role people in Perry County played in the voting rights movement is as undeniable as it is left out or distorted by many people who retell the story of those historic events today. Nothing that happened in Selma caused the Selma to Montgomery March. Everything that caused the Selma to Montgomery March happened in Marion, Alabama. The idea for a march to the state capitol came after the death of Jimmy Lee Jackson. Jackson was shot by state trooper James Bernard Fowler following a mass meeting at Zion Church in support of civil rights leader Reverend James Orange. Della Simpson Maynor of Marion was there that night. At age 14, she was one of the foot soldiers of the movement, as were many of the other students at the Lincoln School in Marion. We were in the midst of getting folks registered to vote. And at the same time, we were, we were doing um, um, civil protests, you know, uh, nonviolent uh, protests um, in regards to some civil rights that were being denied. Orange had been arrested during a recent demonstration and had been taken to the old Perry County Jail. You know, word had gotten out that they were going to kill him. And so, you know, you just wanted some people to be around. And once we got out, that's when the police came from around the courthouse and wherever else they were. So that was the first thing I noticed was the, how many of them it was. Maynard says the marchers ran for cover after being attacked by state troopers. We dispersed once they uh, charged us. Uh, we went to familiar places. For me, it was Max Cafe, which is right behind the church here. There's Cajun Lee sitting at the front door. And then there's Jimmy coming in. And so he's, they already struggling. They fought out on back out the door. And then you hear the gunshot. Jimmy Lee Jackson died at Good Samaritan Hospital in Selma eight days later. And that's when civil rights leader James Bevel suggested that Jackson's body be taken to Montgomery and placed on the Capitol steps for Governor George Wallace to see. I was in grade school when people bravely marched across that bridge, but I didn't really understand the magnitude of it. And I never really understood why it happened. Why were those marches taking place? Mary Sullivan of Elk Grove Village, Illinois, is on a quest for knowledge to help her deal with the racist attitudes she sees resurfacing around the country and in her own family. On this day, her journey brought her here to Marion, Alabama. I'm trying to understand what underlies all the hatred so that I can find some common ground and a way to talk with family and acquaintances who, well, a racist. And that's the very thing the civil rights movement was fighting against. And no one in Perry County fought the good fight harder than Albert Turner Sr. He made, made people understand that life doesn't have to be the way it is to, uh, here in Marin, Alabama. We have certain rights and we have the right to make sure that it happens. Uh, he was just an inspiration all the way around. And it didn't take much uh, uh, for us to follow him. As a matter of fact, the vast majority of the people on that bridge with uh, Albert and, and John Lewis, that fateful day, were people from Marin, Alabama. That was the Bloody Sunday March. The vast majority on the front line was Albert's folks. That's Marion. My brother was one of them. It was very important for us to know that my dad was out trying to make uh, this world a better place. We knew that. Nobody ever taught me what was going on. Maybe my parents didn't understand it themselves. Maybe our teachers didn't understand it. Maybe when I got to high school, they didn't know how to talk about it. All I know is that I'm 71 years old and I'm just now reading that history and learning it and I want to stand in the place where it happened. Marion was key to the 1965 Voting Rights Act being passed. You don't get to Selma. You don't get to the Edmunds Pettus Bridge unless you come to Perry County, to Marion, Alabama. Reporting from Marion, George McDonald, Alabama News Network.
Thanks, George. And Perry County's ties to the voting rights movement run even deeper than all of that. Dr. Martin Luther King's wife, Coretta, and Andrew Young's wife, Jean, are both natives of Perry County. They were both also schoolmates of Albert Turner Sr. at the Lincoln School.